awesome name, to praise the mighty name of our God. And so it's just blessed to be among the living. Amen. I shouldn't have to say that, but one time, I think everybody uh, at home watching, and I hope you're there now, uh, uh, joining us, that uh, it should be very easy for us uh, to be thankful, very easy for us to say praise God, uh, because God, no doubt, no doubt, uh, God is keeping us. He's keeping us. He's keeping us alive. You know, something like that we take for granted, but given the pandemic and what we hear, we inundated with reports every day of somebody hospitalized, somebody being discharged, uh, somebody going home uh, to be with the Lord. And so uh, as God gives us life, uh, we got to praise him and thank God and, and, and live our lives in a way that bring glory and honor to him. So it's just good to be in the house of the Lord, and it's great to be with you, with you again on this evening. Uh, before I get started, I want to mention uh, some announcements I want to make, make uh, mention of before we get going. I want to uh, remind us, uh, this is the first Sunday, and you remember last, well, this past month, July, uh, we had the Lord's Supper here. We made it possible for you to come to church uh, at 9.30 on that Sunday, uh, between 9.30 and 10.30, uh, we will be administering the Lord's Supper. Now look, don't be afraid to come out, all right, church family? Uh, you won't be coming in the building, all right? You'll be in your car. Uh, somebody will serve you the supper uh, through your window. And so, and so they have gloves on their hands, and so we should be great. So I would hope that more of you come out uh, to partake of the Lord's Supper. Lord's Supper. This month, I noticed a lot of you didn't come. I thought more of you would have come uh, to want to share and partake of the Lord's Supper. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping Sunday, I'm hoping Sunday that, that more of you uh, trust God. Could you trust God to just drive over to the church and, and take the Lord's Supper? You don't have to come in. Nobody breathing on you. You not breathing on us. And, and so all is good, all right? So come out uh, this Sunday, 930 to 1030, uh, we'll be ministering the supper, and so I, I look forward to seeing you on this, on this Sunday, so please come on out. Also, also, for our, for our school age uh, uh, children and parents, uh, parenting school age children, uh, on our website, on our website, uh, we have an application. An application is out there. If you need help with school supplies, backpacks, just fill out the application. Uh, the information is there. Uh, uh, fill out that application. Uh, get it to us so we would make sure we recognize that and, and bless you. We want to help uh, our kids here at the church. I made an announcement last Wednesday as well as on Sunday that we were, God blessed us, and so we are actually going to pay for all of the school supplies uh, for Leon Valley Elementary School. So that's over 500 and some children attend that school. And so this school year, we sponsoring all of the, all of the supplies for those kids. And so, and so we're doing that on top of helping our own, especially, especially our own. So, so look, fill out the application. That's out there on our website. Uh, get it to us so we can get backpacks, school supplies uh, to our members. All right? Please do that. We'd be so grateful uh, for that. Also, don't forget, don't forget, uh, church is open. Church is open. Uh, we can seat up to 70 uh, of our members and guests can get in here, 70 uh, for each service. Uh, now, it's based on you calling in, emailing the church. Call or email, let us know uh, how many are coming in your party uh, uh, so we can make sure we count everybody and we have a seat for you when you arrive. Because the seats are designated, uh, we have to do that to make sure that uh, we have a seat for those of you who take the time to email us or call us. We want to make sure that you have a seat when you, when you get here. 
So, so remember to do that. Uh, call us or email the church. And look, we have 11 o'clock service based on the number of members who are calling. We've had people to show up at 11 o'clock and we wasn't here. And that's because one, we didn't know you were coming. And then two, we have to go over the 70 mark. So if we have uh, 70 people to come and be a part of the 8 o'clock, then we open up the 11 o'clock. So we're willing to do it. We're ready to do it. I'm excited about it, uh, uh, about seeing your faces and we worshiping the Lord together uh, in this space. And, and, but, but look, it's, it's on you to do that. It's safe here. Let me just let me emphasize that, that uh, we taking steps here uh, to make sure it's safe for you and for me, all right, to make sure it's safe. And so we're disinfecting this building uh, before you come in, after you come in, uh, and I, I mean the whole building, uh, restrooms, uh, uh, the whole building is, is clean before and after. And, and, and so we, we try and look, we take temperatures when you come. Uh, uh, you get a chance to also clean your hands before you come into the uh, sanctuary. We have gloves if you want that. Uh, masks are mandatory, so uh, you have your own. If you don't, we, we'll supply that. We have masks for you. And so we're trying to make it safe, uh, designated seating, so there's nobody in front of you, there's nobody behind you. So whatever row you seated on at the church when you come, you'll notice there's no one in front of you, no one behind you. So we're making sure that we have safe uh, uh, distancing and our worship experiences where, where we're hoping that God would honor and bless that and keep it safe for all of us. We can worship God in a public setting as well as, you know, our live streaming uh, as well. We're going to continue to do that, but, but, uh, but we are here. We, we, the doors are open, and, and we are here worshiping God and praising God with those who will come and, and attend. All right? All right, all right. Let me just mention our prayer list. Uh, for tonight, uh, we want to remember brother and sister Daniels. Uh, sister Daniels, uh, they've been caring for her dad. He's, he's, a, he's a veteran. Uh, he's in the VA hospital. Uh, brother Smoke, uh, the doctors uh, have, have done all they can do uh, for him. I think he's 87 years old. And, and so we want to be praying uh, for the Daniels, all right? Pray for brother and sister Daniel. Pray for the Smoke family as well. Uh, that God would, would comfort them. Uh, uh, we pray for their consolation. We know God, he is a God of all comfort. And so let's, let's seek God's face uh, to help us. You know, oftentimes and any time uh, we're talking about uh, uh, the loss of life and, and serious illnesses is when in ministry for myself is when I, I feel insufficient. I feel insufficient when you have to deal with, with moments like that. But I thank God that in his word, he helps me, uh, any preacher, any of us involved in ministry, that the Bible reminds us that we are not sufficient in and of ourselves and that God is here for us. And so, and so we wanna be praying uh, for that family. We know God is the God of all comfort. We know he would give them comfort and peace. He has strengthened them in this moment, in this hour. Remember Sister April, we was praying for Sister April not too long ago, uh, but I saw an email the other day, maybe last night, uh, that was telling me that her daughter uh, is in the hospital now. So let's remember to pray for April's uh, daughter, Felicia, I think is her first name, uh, to pray for her. Sister Mac, I just happened to, I uh, was thinking about Sister Mac and, and, and uh, emailed her uh, on yesterday, on Monday, and, and found out that, that, that uh, she, was, she had uh, contracted the virus, COVID, she was getting over, she's on the other side of it now. But let's remember to pray uh, for Sister Mac, that uh, she continue to, 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 to get well and get beyond uh, COVID-19. We thank God that she is doing well and we just want to continue to pray her strength in the Lord as well as we want to pray again another prayer of, uh, of comfort uh, for Brother Dennis Scott. Brother Dennis Scott uh, hit me up today. I was actually I hit him up. I was reaching out to him about something else, 
and, and found out that his father uh, had passed away. And so Dennis is en route. He's going back to Detroit uh, uh, for the homegoing celebration of his dad. And so we want to remember uh, Brother Dennis Scott, remember his mom, uh, uh, remember to pray for them as well, uh, that God would comfort the family and help them in this time of sorrow. Amen? So I look at here, God can do it all. Just think, we, we, we serve an awesome God. Uh, if, that, if that list was just for me, I'm overwhelmed already. Uh, but I, I thank God that we have a God who, who is certainly able, and, and, and he promised that he would meet us uh, at our point of need. He promised us uh, that if we would come before his throne of grace, uh, that he would, he would meet us here and he would give us uh, the grace and mercy we need to help us in our time of need. Let's continue to be in prayer for other members who, who are sick and who are recovering that we may not know about. Uh, remember my nephew. Remember, keep praying uh, for Dorian. Uh, uh, what, a, what a man of God. I'm so proud of Dorian's faith level. His faith level is just unbelievable, that, that the faith uh, that he has in God uh, while he's working through uh, uh, leukemia, uh, uh, he, he, he is an oak. I've said that before. And so he, so he just inspires us. If any of us been reading uh, some of his words uh, on his Facebook page, uh, powerful, powerful stuff, powerful uh, uh, faith and, and shoe leather. And so let's, we believe in God that, that, we're gonna, that the Lord is going to deliver the match uh, uh, for Dorian soon. That's my prayer. That's my hope. And so thank you, St. John, those of you who were able to respond uh, 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 to, to, to the call for us to be donors. Uh, I thought I would be able to participate, but I think it's an age requirement uh, uh, 18 to 44. So if you're 18 to 44, uh, you can participate. You can be a donor, uh, uh, and, and I hope you would look at that and and uh, and reach out uh, uh, to 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 those healthcare providers. To fill out that paperwork, and uh, and I hope you a match uh, for Dorian and so many others uh, who are in in the hospital waiting on donors. All right. All right. God, we love you tonight. We praise you. We thank you, God, again tonight uh, for just being such an awesome God. God, this is overwhelming. I'm, I'm sweating, and, and, and I, I'm just blown away by, by the pressure and the, 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 the stress associated with uh, uh, life. And, and as I think about uh, the prayer list and, and so many names that's not on that list, uh, you be, you just such a large God, your, your goodness and, and, and your mercy and your love and your kindness is so huge. I, I, I can see you so much better because uh, uh, I know that you are God who is certainly able. You're God who promised in your word. We have seen it. I've seen it uh, that you will never leave us. You'll never forsake us. We have seen how much you love us in Christ. Uh, when we just look to Calvary and see how far you were willing to go, what you was willing to do to save us. Amen. I'm sure, God, you, would, you are certainly loving us enough to keep us and to hold us up uh, in our everyday challenges as we try and, and, and matriculate as we go about our pilgrimage uh, in this land. It's your goodness and your mercy uh, that is, that's lifting us, that's holding us up and so we thank you God for your love we pray in Jesus name for your forgiveness of all our sins we pray God that you would forgive us on tonight for any sin God that we have committed God that would hurt us tonight hinder us tonight uh, from you hearing us cry out to you in prayer as we are interceding for others in need as well as ourselves we pray in Jesus name for your forgiveness that you would cleanse our hearts and minds and God you would make us worthy vessels tonight as we stand uh, before your throne of grace as we, we stand before the altar of the lord we give you praise tonight for such great salvation that we all share and have in the person jesus christ we thank you god uh, for your divine wisdom uh, that you would come up with something we call the church to call out ones you knew god that we would need 
shoulders uh, to lean on, hands to hold. And so we thank you, God, for our church family. Uh, we thank you, God, for such support system uh, in such a time as this. And so we praise you for your wisdom and for your kindness, God, that you are looking out for us by giving us brothers and sisters, God, to intercede for us in prayer, uh, to, to hear our cries, to hear our voices, uh, to sit with us, to stand with us, uh, to comfort us in our times of need, and, and to rejoice with us, amen, in those victories that we share in this life. And so we thank you, God, from triumph to, to valley living, you are yet, you still God, and you've been our keeper. And so we give you praise and glory tonight. We ask you, God, to continue to heal. You are the God who heals. And so we pray, God, tonight for your healing presence and power there in Houston. God, that you would touch Dorian's body. We pray, God, for those donors tonight. We pray, God, for April's daughter. We pray we lift her up on tonight. We pray for the Daniels, that you would comfort the Daniels family and the Smoke family tonight. The doctors have said they, can, they can't do any more. And so, God, we, we turn to you. It's not that we're just coming, but we know, God, that, that it's your time uh, that you could help uh, get the Daniels family through uh, this moment. And so we thank you for our Brother Smoke's life and uh, what he meant to his country and family. And so we pray, God, that you would comfort him uh, in these last days. We know life and death is in the hand of God, and we pray, God, that you would comfort him even now is our prayer. Remember Carla Randolph. We pray for her and those providers who will be caring for her in coming days or weeks. We just pray, God, that you continue to work all things well in that situation. We pray that she's encouraged tonight, knowing, God, that you still own the throne. You sit high, but you look low. Thank you, God, again for Sister Mac and, and others who you have blessed. God, you have blessed our church where we've had members who have been sick, who have been hospitalized or at home as a result of COVID-19. God, you have just been so gracious to this church that you have brought our members through. And so we thank you, God, for that again on tonight. We just give you praise and glory uh, for being our God. We give you praise and glory, God, for uh, just placing us in your kingdom and, and giving us uh, the privilege to to serve you, to teach or preach your word, or just minister to others in so many ways. We thank you, God, for how you have blessed our hands to be a blessing. I'm praying, God, you continue to show me, as we show the church, uh, families and those that we want to bless. We want to be a church uh, that's doing extraordinary things in this pandemic. And so we just give you praise and glory in advance for how you are blessing us, and we pray, God, that we would be sensitive uh, to what you are saying in this hour. Guide us tonight in our time of study. We'll be careful to give you praise and give you glory, for it's in Jesus' name we pray and we do thank you, and the church say amen, amen. All right, all right. We praise God again tonight uh, for allowing us to get together and to study his word. And so we want to look at, uh, we're in 1 Corinthians we're in chapter 14. And so, you know, you know, I'm pretty sure you know, if you have a study Bible or if you've been looking into your commentaries and uh, to make sure Pastor Price is close to being right, <laughs> you know that in this particular chapter, it's a distinction. He is, he's showing us which is superior. Uh, to the other, prophecy or tongues, prophecy or tongues. And so, and so uh, on last week, we, we dived into this thing. And so if you have your Bibles out and you have your smartphone and iPads and you're ready to go, uh, we're going to jump back into this 14th chapter. We hit some high spots on our way. Uh, and, and chapter 2 I should say verse 2, chapter 14, uh, he, he's given this comparison, tongues versus prophecy. Paul makes the point here that, that, that tongues, when we speak in tongues, we're not speaking to men, 
but to God. All right. And, and let me just say this, too, while we're getting going here tonight. I'm not I'm not talking about what Baptists believe on the topic. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm suggesting that what this is what First Corinthians chapter 14 is what the Bible says on it. It's not it's not what some denomination say about it. All right. So let's be clear that that I'm not teaching a Baptist doctrine at this point on this topic. I'm, just, I'm suggesting that this is what the Bible say on this topic, all right? And so if you have your Bible, it's clear that Paul is saying that anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Now remember, what, 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 what was going on here is that in this church, remember in this church, the church of Corinth, uh, it's obvious that, that some of the saints were, were putting an emphasis on this particular spiritual gift, all right? That they, that they thought that because they spoke in this heavenly language, they spoke in an unknown tongue, they thought that they had an advantage or that they were super spiritual, they were closer to God than any of the other saints, all right? And so it could be tongues or anything. Remember, Paul says all of the spiritual gifts are given to us, God gives the gifts, and then Paul says those gifts, the source and the power for those gifts is the Holy Spirit, right? And Paul makes the point that all, all the saints, everybody, have at least one spiritual gift, all right? So, so that, means, that means all of us have to, all of us have to be endowed, all of us have to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So, 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 so tongues can't be the only way to distinguish, right, or to qualify whether or not you or I have received this gift from God, right? All of us have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, not just those who speak in tongues, all right? So, so stay with me here. So he says that when we speak in tongues, we're not speaking to men, we're speaking to God, right? Prophecy, he's saying when we, when we prophesy, when we speak the word of God, the spoken word of God, he said we can, we can strengthen, encourage, and comfort, right? We can, we can, we can bring uh, 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 what he would call strength and encouragement and consolation when we speak. Like tonight, we was praying tonight for people uh, in the hospital, uh, people have lost loved ones, or loved ones are in hospice care. Paul is saying, you better off showing up uh, by the bedside, uh, just speaking words, intelligible words, what are you going to say, uh, uh, that, that you do better, and th that in this moment, he says, praying words, intelligible words, words that the people listening to you pray can understand, than for you to show up by the bedside speaking in a tongue that only God hears and understands and not to people uh, there that who you are praying for, all right? Because Paul says when we prophesy, Paul says now you can strengthen somebody in the church with your words that's intelligible. You can, you can encourage somebody in the church with your words and you can comfort, right, or you can bring consolation to a church member, uh, to the body, uh, when we're using words that people could understand, all right? That this, is what, this is what it is, y'all, and, and, and so stay with me, right? So tongue speaks, and at verse 4, in verse 4, he says to us, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, all right? He who speaks... Uh, in, in tongues edify themselves. But the person that prophesies, you edify the church, right? Or you edify the body, okay? Are y'all seeing that in verse four? He says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. It edifies the church. Now, now just in this verse four, you should know that he's not talking about 
you praying in tongues at home in your closet, right? That's probably where you should do it if you don't have an interpreter. And, he, and Paul makes that point uh, as well in this chapter uh, that, that, that he's not say, saying to you and I tonight that, that he's against you speaking in tongues. If you've read the chapter, you know uh, he's not saying that. But what he's talking about, order, right? He's talking about you got to have order in worship. Uh, uh, maybe they were showing up in worship and, and everybody just popping off in tongues and, and nobody don't know what's going on uh, in the church. And so, and so in, in Paul's eye, uh, that's, that's, that's out of order. That's more disruptive than strengthening, uh, than encouraging, than comforting somebody on a Sunday. When we come to church on a Sunday or when we come on a Wednesday night to Bible study, I would hope we are coming to hear from God a word that would strengthen us, a word that would comfort us, right? A word that would encourage us. But if all we're doing is popping off in this heavenly language, edifying ourselves, then the body is not helped. Body is not helped. So he says, he says here, he says, when we prophesy, we edify the church. So, so he's talking about corporate worship. But just by him saying that, he letting us know that, that when we come together in the church, in, 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 a, in, a, in a corporate setting, when all of us together are, 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 are if I'm speaking prophecy to church, meaning to people, I can build those people up. I can edify those people better, quicker, I would say, by speaking intelligible words than speaking in a language that, in this case, if I don't have the gift of interpretation, I don't even know what I'm saying. All right. And so and so here, so here he is. He said, verse five, he, he says to you and I here, he says what? I would like everyone, he says, to speak in tongues. He said, but I would rather have you what? Prophesy. He says he who prophesy is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. And so, and so you see what Paul just said. Paul just said that prophecy, from, from a ministry standpoint, right, when we come and we're doing ministry, we're trying to build people up. We're trying to grow people in their faith. Uh, 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 right now, we're trying to grow you. Even though we are not here together, I'm hoping that through Bible study tonight and preaching on Sunday mornings, that, that the Word of God is edifying you, that it's building you up, uh, so you can take on whatever challenge it is at your address, right? Or whatever challenge it is on your job. That, 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 that word you hear on Sunday, this word you're hearing tonight, uh, uh, that, is, that is building you up, right? It's you, you're being edified uh, by the word that you hear. And so this is what Paul is saying when he says that, that, that I, I, think, I think prophecy, he said, is, is better, is greater to use that in ministry with the body, he says, then tongues, then he says, unless, unless. He says, tongues would be great in a corporate setting if you have the gift of interpretation. And, and brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know about you, but, but my experience, my experience have been that, that when we speak in tongues in this new church we in, this, this, this Western church, Westernized church, this 21st century church, we, we do it as if we, we have this power. You know, we want to sell somebody that, 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 that I got some power out of heaven. You know, I'm not a regular brother, a regular sister. I got this gift, right? And, 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 and so oftentimes what we see in the church today is we see this particular gift being, being practiced, you know, in an improper way. It's not the way, it's, the way we see it, it's not according to Scripture, because Paul is saying if you do it with the, with the group, okay, in, the, in, in a corporate setting, Paul says that you should also be able to interpret what it is that you are saying. And oftentimes... What we see in church, uh, uh, if, I'm, if I'm at home and I'm looking at, you know, Christian uh, networks and, and, 
And, and that can be dangerous, brothers and sisters. If you're not, if you're not in the Word, you might want to just go watch nothing on TV, all right? You might as well go watch Gunsmoke than to, than to just put that TV on some of these Christian networks because it could be damaging to you uh, if you don't put the time in and study the Word because th you might see anything uh, 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 on, on television these days. And so, and so I, I don't know, I don't know uh, if God sanctioned all of it or not, but I know it has some, some theological challenges. It has some Bible challenges. And so, and so he says, we need to be interpreting Pastor Price. If it's happening, uh, uh, you ought to want to be able to interpret what you are saying, he said. Here, why, 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 why? So that the church may be edified. Paul is, is clearly tonight saying to you and I that your spiritual gifts... I know I'm talking about tongues tonight, but Paul is saying your spiritual gift is for the edifying of the church. It's for the edifying of the body. And, and, so, and, so, and so we can't watch. We can't sit down on God uh, with our spiritual gifts. We, we just can't afford to just be in time out. You know, we, we got to believe and trust God that even in this season, that, that there's a way, a safe way, a smart way uh, 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 where we can still exercise our spiritual gifts because our gifts are needed to edify the body, to build up the body. I would think the body needs to be edified right now. I would think the body needs to be built up right now. And so if we're in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a pandemic, uh, uh, a novelty. I mean, look, it's rare. Uh, I would think in, in this rare time, in this season of rareness and, and uncertainty and unknownness, that our gifts that God has given us would be of great value to the church tonight. So, so, so look, we can't just hide and sit away uh, from ministry because our gifts are needed uh, to edify uh, to build up the body of Christ. He said, now, brothers, he says, if, if, if I come to you, this verse 6, and I speak in tongues, what good will it be to you? Unless what? Unless I bring to you some revelation or knowledge, he says, or prophecy, a word of instruction. All right? He says, so what Paul is saying is no good to you if I, if I do that, if I just speak in an unknown tongue, if I just speak in tongues, he said, what good is it if I'm not bringing revelation or knowledge or word of instruction, right? Paul is big on that in this chapter, talking about instruction, a word of instruction, right? We still need a word of instruction from God, again, especially right now. Lord, what am I supposed to do about this? What am I supposed to do about that? God, what, what, what do I got? What, Lord, show me how, how, how to deal with this situation where... Uh, we don't know if the school's going to open or not. Uh, we, don't, we don't know if child care is going to be really available. Uh, God, look, some, there are families who don't have uh, the most modern technology. You know, they don't have, you know, that, that, that digital divide now is going to impact uh, 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 families who's on the margin, right? And, and, so, and so what is God instructing the church uh, to do or say uh, in this age? How, how will the church, other than just praying for our members that, that things work out for them, that they're able to work from home and the kids can be home with them and, you know, you know but all of it might not, it might not be a, a one fit that fit all. And, 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 so, and so now we need a word from God. We need, a, we need revelation and knowledge. We need, we need words of instruction uh, while we are trying to parent, right, our, our homes and guide our children. We're trying to make decisions about about our jobs, going to work, you know. And, and, and so we need, again, we need the word. We need a word from God to edify us more than us try to come across as though we're superhuman, super spiritual, right? It's time out for being super, super spiritual. Just, just, just be like Jesus. <laughs> just be like Jesus. You don't, have to, you don't have to be the holiest one on the campus the way we, the way we define holiness and power. OK, he says, even he says, even in the case, he said, of, of a lifeless thing, he says, like, a, you know, that, that makes sounds such as a flute or a harp. He said, how will anyone uh, uh, know 
uh, what, what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes. Again, if, if a trumpet, he says, uh, does not sound or bugle does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? Right. And so Paul is saying, in other words, a distinct sound, a tone. In other words, he's talking about understanding those tones. Right. But if I don't understand the language, then, then how will we know what to do? We don't know what you're telling us to do. Uh, 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 he, he, he says here, so it is with you. Unless you speak, hear that word, intelligible. I used that term a few minutes ago. Paul says to speak intelligible words with your tongue. Speak, he, now the Paul said when you come to church, Pastor Price, let, let, let them hear more intelligible words at church than, than a language that people don't understand, right? He, 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 say, he says, you know, he says, he said, how, how will anyone know what you are saying if you would just be speaking, he says, into the air? Undoubtedly, he says, there are all sorts of, of languages, he says, in the world, yet, yet none of them is without meaning. So all, there's a lot of, Paul says, there's a lot of languages. If we just talk in language, he said, but, but all, they all have meaning. They're not without meaning. In other words, we can, we can define we can, what those words mean. He says, he, say, he says, if then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, he says, I am a foreigner to that, to the speaker. And he is a foreigner to me. And, and it's like that sometime on a, have you been to, a, again, a worship service, and we in here praising the Lord, and, and somebody gets to speaking in an unknown tongue, and they're speaking in tongue. I be, at that point, I become a foreigner to the speaker, right? And, 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 and he is a foreigner, he or she is a foreigner to me because I don't know what they're saying. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't understand, you know, I, you know, you know I'm, I'm at loss. I, I, to me, it's just, it's just noise. Uh, Paul says, speaking in the air. <laughs> Paul says, it's speaking in the air. Now, that, now that's a, that might be a low blow. That can be a gut blow. Because uh, I know the super spiritual people feel as though I'm speaking to God. <laughs> you know, that's a great moment going on right there. And it is for you and God. You are being edified. But you are in the, in the midst of the rest of the saints. And so, and so while you being, you being edified, they don't know what's going on. Right? It's almost, I, I, I'm thinking an analogy just popped in my head. Uh, uh, it, it's often said that, it, that it's impolite uh, for us, for you to show up eating and not have enough food for everybody in the room. You show up eating or drinking, you walk in there and, you know, you got, you know, a, 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 a nice meal in your, in your presence and, 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 and you just chowing down and everybody looking at you, right? I mean, I was raised, I was taught that that would be impolite, that, that, that if, you're gonna, if you're gonna show up with the meal, then have enough for everybody to eat. It's almost the same with the tongues. It, it's impolite for you uh, uh, to, be, to be sprouting off in a, in a, in a tongue uh, in this heavenly language and, 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 and nobody else can participate, nobody else know what it is you are saying to be a part of that exchange and that, spirit, that experience. So, so, so here he is, Paul keep pushing us here, right? He keep pushing us. When he comes down here, he says, he says, uh, so it is with you. Since you are, he says, eager to have spiritual gifts, try, he said, to excel in, a, in gifts that build up the church. But at that verse 12, Paul says, great, it's great, I got you. You're eager uh, uh, for spiritual gifts. You want them. Uh, uh, you, you know, he don't get into why you want them. He just saying you want them. <laughs> you want spiritual gifts. And so Paul said, okay, that's great. He said, but then, but, 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 he says, but excel in gifts that build up the church. Huh? I mean, that, for me, that's, that's really plain. I mean, 
uh, uh, again, I, I'm not teaching a Baptist doctrine. This just this just 1 Corinthians chapter 14. But but I, maybe I can see why uh, uh, some of the church fathers who who come down on the side uh, of, of a Baptist church persuasion. Of course, that have changed because now uh, we have full gospel. And so in a full gospel, Baptist, no, normally full gospel is Baptist churches. They, they mixed in there, but they really were Baptist churches <clears throat> who became what they call full gospel. And so they operating, and I guess, and healing and speaking in tongues, all that stuff <clears throat> is now a part of some of those full gospel Baptist churches. But, uh, <clears throat> but, but here's the Bible saying, <clears throat> now that became a, that became a, a, a a new rep, that was a revelation. That was a, that was a big deal, that, that the Holy Spirit had came into the Baptist church. Uh, 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 the Holy Spirit is now free to move in the Baptist church. And, and here's a Bible verse where, where the Holy Spirit had never been out of the Baptist church. It's just that within, within the Baptist church, uh, a lot of those church fathers, a lot of those back in the day, probably felt what Paul was saying here. It's okay to have, you know, to, to be eager to have gifts, <clears throat> but the emphasis Paul is placing, he's saying, be eager to excel in gifts that build up the church, that edify the body. I mean, that's the difference, that, 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 that I'm more uh, 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 interested in building up the church, edifying the body more than edifying myself. Now, if you, again, if you want to edify yourself, if you, if you want to do that, I think that's great. But if you don't have the gift of interpretation, then you should pray and speak in tongues in your closet when you're home. You know, <laughs> you, know, you, know you should do that, you know, where you and God, because at that moment, you are edifying yourself, right? You shouldn't, you should got to be careful that, that when we are popping off, and again, and, and with, the, with the body, with, the, with, the, with all the saints here, uh, and we don't have an interpreter. For this reason, he says, anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray. Lord have mercy. Now, now Paul, earlier, y'all, he told you that you ought to want to interpret it, right? He said, he said, he said, I, he, he said prophecy was greater than tongues unless you interpret. Now he gets over here in verse 13, and now Paul is telling you that since, he says, for this reason, anyone who speaks in tongues should pray that he or she may interpret what they say. That he, so Paul is saying, it's great that you have the gift of speaking in tongues. Now he's pushing the saints at the church at Corinth He's pushing them now to say, you should now want to pray to God that he would bless you to have the gift of interpretation. Right? Now, again, these days, everybody want to lay hands on you for you to speak it. Paul is saying, while they got their hand on you, they ought to also lay hands on you to be able to interpret because Paul is saying that the gift works better if you can interpret what you're saying. Lord have mercy. Y'all let me know how y'all feeling tonight. Here we go. He says, for I pray, Paul says, I pray, I pray in tongues, or I pray in a tongue, right? He, said, he says, he says, for if I pray, he says, in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. He says, and if you are praising God with your spirit, how can one who finds himself among those, right, who do not understand, say amen to your thanksgiving? Since he or she does not what know what you are saying, and so Paul is saying again, if 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 we in a if we in a worship setting and 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 you're praying uh, in a heavenly language or you're praying in tongues, 
again, if you can't interpret, if you can't tell me what it is you're saying, I can't appreciate it, and I don't even know when it's time to say amen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I should be saying thank you, Lord, or praise. I don't know what to say. <laughs> he, he said, you may be what? Giving thanks well enough, but the other man or the other woman is not edified. Whoo, Paul, Paul laying it down. Paul, Paul, look, Paul is saying, you might be doing a spiritual thing. That's great. That's well enough. Yeah, you, you in the spirit. Nothing wrong with that. But Paul is saying, but those around you are not getting anything. Nothing is happening for them spiritually. Here it is right here. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Woo! Now, now that gives Paul the right to say what he said. If, if that sentence wasn't in the chapter, somebody might have some bad feelings about Paul. But Paul is saying, this, this is a bold statement. It's not like he know. he says as if he know everybody. Paul says, I speak, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. <laughs> I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, right? It, it, you know, see, what, 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 what Paul is saying, God has, endowed, God has empowered me in such a way that, that, that there's a greater anointing, Paul is saying, on me, who, who is the founder of the church, uh, uh, than all of y'all. Even if, even if you see yourself as a super saint and, and, and you know how some folk, you know, just, just think it's just them and God, just them and God. And, and so Paul said, okay, it might be just you and God, but here's my praise. I'm thanking God that I speak tongues more than not just you, but all of y'all. <laughs> okay, all of y'all together, Paul says. He says, but, he said, but in the church, here he comes. I, I thank God I speak tongues more than all of you. Then here he comes. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others. There's that instructions again than 10,000 words in a tongue. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Are y'all hearing me tonight? I, I hope y'all tuned in tonight. Look at here. You don't have to f feel as though that you don't have a great presence of God. You don't have to feel as though that you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in your church, in a Baptist church. I don't care, you know, what, what that, if you're saved, if you're born again, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if Jesus Christ is the head of the church, Paul is saying all of us have the Holy Ghost. All of us have the Spirit of God. All of us can pray and see God move in miraculous ways. Pa Paul is saying none of us are shortchanged. Paul says that, that, that what we need more, we need more than just somebody being a super religious person or a super saint. Paul says we need people who know the word of God, who can speak. Paul says he would rather speak five intelligible words. Five, y'all. Five words. Paul says, I'd rather have five words that you can understand than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. And if that doesn't clear it up for anybody tonight, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what you need. You, you know, I don't know. I, I can't help you. I mean, if you, if you love the Bible, if you love the Bible, uh, uh, Paul is, 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 is making the point here that, that, that he has that gift, but he understands what the church needs more than, than, than you and I edifying ourselves. The church need men and women of God who understand their task, the purpose uh, look, on their life is to build other people up, is to edify the church, right? It, look, it, Paul talks about it until we all, he said, until we all come into the fullness of Christ, he said, until we all mature. And so our gifts is to help folk grow. Folk don't grow with you speaking in no tongues. And ain't nobody growing because of that. You might not be growing because you're speaking in tongues, 
but you don't have a word of revelation. You don't have knowledge. You don't have a word of instruction. You just, you just speaking in, a, in, in, in tongues to God. If you can't interpret what you're saying, you, you building yourself up, but you don't know what you're telling God. So Paul says, Pastor Price, look, you're here. Look, look, y'all in serious times. Y'all, y'all, y'all in the middle of a pandemic. You don't need to show up to church and just, just pump, you know, just puffing your chest up, just building yourself up. You don't need a church full of people who, who, who are selfish and, 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 and individually driven, you know, centered. We need people who are other people centered, who, who, who come to church with the understanding that God has gifted me, that God has well, empowered me. But what? So I can what? I can speak intelligible words that would strengthen, encourage, that would, that would bring consolation or comfort, you know, that would build up other men and women and children of God. Paul can't be any clearer when he says, I take five words over 10,000. Five words. Over 10,000. That, that's, that's why the preachers taught, don't be up there preaching 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and then tell the church, I feel my help coming. Your help ought to show up when you stand up, right? <laughs> we, we need to be hearing from your help when you start preaching. And not after you'd have been up 50 minutes, you'd have ate up 50 minutes of my time, of my Sunday, before your help come. Paul says five words of in, uh, intelligible words is more powerful than, 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 than the preacher bloviating for 40 and 50 minutes. Uh, whoo, that's mighty rich. He said, brothers, stop thinking like children in regard to evil, be infants. But in your thinking, be adults. <laughs> he said, when it comes to to knowing how to be evil, he said, be immature, be an infant, huh? Be an infant. When it comes to doing evil, he says, be, be an infant, be immature. Don't, don't, don't specialize in doing evil. Don't know all the evil tricks in the world. He said, he said so be an infant there. <clears throat> he said, but when it comes to thinking, <laughs> in regards to thinking, let be thinking like an adult, right? Be mature, grow up uh, uh, in your Christian faith. He said, it is written, he said, he said, through men, he said, in strange tongues, he says, and through the lips of foreigners, I will speak <clears throat> to this people, but even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. He said, tongues then, tongues then are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. And prophecy, however, is for believers, not unbelievers. Huh? Huh? Are y'all still with me there? Y'all still with me? I know it's almost that time. I hope y'all haven't left the building. Uh, 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 Paul just said something to us in that verse 22, right? Paul just said something to us in verse 22. That, 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 that Paul is saying to you and I that, that, again, a mature Christian, when we grow up in our Christian faith, uh, we are, not, we are not at loss. We don't feel uh, as if we are stepchildren, you know, uh, in, the, in the body of Christ. We don't feel as though we're an orphans or something uh, in the body of Christ. We feel that we are just as connected as our brothers and sisters who have this gift of tongues, right? right? And you've heard me say that when I hang out with all my preacher friends, my clergy partners, I mean, some of them speak in tongues and some of us don't, but I don't never feel less than nobody <laughs> because of that. You know, you know, they can they can say whatever they want to say. I praise God. That's their gift. But I but make no mistake about it. Right. When my turn come on the mic, there is a greater presence. Amen. There's there's an endowment. There's an anointing on my life where he wants me. What the focus is to speak intelligible words. That, that, that the gifting on my life, I'm locked in on what? Edifying not myself, but building other people up. 
My calling is to see you grow. And, and so Paul says that tongues is for an unbeliever. That, that's so that an unbeliever can see something supernatural, something mystical take place, and it get their attention. You know, it's just like the burning bush. It got Moses' attention. It, 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 you know, God did that to get his attention, and when he, when he turned to it and he noticed the bush wasn't being consumed, then God talked to him. Well, tongues is the same thing. It's, a, it's something that will get the unbeliever's attention. It's when the unbeliever hears something like that, you know, it captures them and, and locks them in on what God is doing in that instance. It makes them understand this must be a God somewhere because that ain't normal. That ain't natural. Right? It's an unnatural thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a divine thing. Praise God. But he used it to get their attention. But if, you, but if you're a believer, he already got your attention. You already know who God is. You don't, you don't need something like that for you to know God is still able, that God is still alive, that God is still on the throne. You don't, you don't need a miracle for you, for you to praise God, for you to say <clears throat> thank you to God. Look, you already have a relationship with God that teaches you that it's God that woke you up on this morning and it was God that started you on your way. You already have a relationship with God that teaches you that it's God who is keeping you and who is keeping you right now. You don't need something mystical. You don't need, you know, I don't need to see another miracle to help me with that. Right. That, that, that's where the old folk come in. If God don't say another word, if God don't do another thing, what? He's already done enough. In other words, I'm already on board. Lord, I'm yours. Amen. But to somebody who is seeking God or someone who don't know God, God uses tongues to capture the attention of the unbeliever with hopes that they respond by faith and want to know God and want to know God better. Amen. Amen. So, so tongues is for the unbeliever, not, not, to, not to believe. And so, and so we're not looking for that type of a revelation at <laughs> St. John. We're not, you know, we're not looking for, for that. We're looking for God to give us more intelligible words uh, that we can have words of instruction. Hello, I'm Pastor Price of St. John Baptist Church. And I want to just thank you for watching us today. I want to encourage you to be one of our subscribers. If you're not already one of our subscribers, please subscribe uh, to our Facebook page. Also, if you need more information about our church, uh, there's a link below that you can click on and learn more about St. John Baptist Church. Also, if you want to give and support the work of the Lord that you have us doing here in San Antonio, you can go to our website. Uh, we have PayPal there. We can, you can give and support the work of the Lord here in San Antonio. I'm so glad, again, that you took the time out to, to watch us, and we hope you come back, visit with us again. Be blessed.